Morning guys. So diving again and uh, no sanctuary today. I just want to get away from the reef and do some real muck diving. Get back to what I like to do. I'm not even gonna use the GoPro, just gonna go out and search for critters. Who knows what? Crabs, nudies, who knows? I don't know. I don't care. Just gonna do some good old muck diving. I'm here at a dive site called El Dorado. It's pretty nice out here. And I also want to test out my D5 Sunto because on my first two dives, I think I mentioned it in my last uh, episode, I wasn't really impressed, but I found out that I had the wrong settings. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it has so many settings, but it has a setting for a whole different gauge display so you can see your bottom time and your no deco time. I don't know why, but anyway, I also had to put it on my right arm because these buttons are so big that I was just pushing buttons every time. Like, no matter what I did, I would push the buttons. So I had to put it on my other side. So that's, can't just be me. It has to be a defect because, or a design flaw. So, enough talking. I'm gonna go get in the water and see what we can find. Should be an awesome day for footage though. Better yeah. than last time. Have fun! <laughs> Critter Hunter. Have fun! Hi, and baby! <laughs> I haven't seen a frogfish in quite a while, and if I remember my speciality course right, this is a giant frogfish. A lot of divers think it's cool when they yawn, but according to Dan Geary, they don't just do it when they're eating, they also do it when they're stressed or threatened. So I'm just going to leave this guy alone. I'm not exactly sure what type of shrimp this is, maybe a commensal shrimp, and he's tiny. He's about the size of a BB, and I can barely see him. And he's sitting on this whip coral that's waving in the breeze, so he's really hard to film. This is another one that was impossible to film, but because of the critter challenge, I'm trying to find crabs. But my next find makes it all worth it. The flamboyant cuttlefish. Now a little while back, one of my critter challenges that you guys sent me was a flamboyant cuttlefish. And for some reason, ever since then, I haven't been able to find one until today. These guys are so cute. The cutest critter in the ocean, I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm still trying to get better at filming, and one of my hardest things is getting close enough without manipulating a critter or scaring it in any way. So at first here, I think I'm, I'm going at it a little too fast, and I'm trying to figure out how to make him stop and kind of cooperate with me. So I just kind of stop moving very fast, stop going towards him, and try to use the zoom more often. And eventually, maybe because of that, or maybe he just got used to me, he just stopped going away from me so much. I don't have to tell you guys how awesome these flashing colors and 
how you can just change color and texture to match the surroundings or to flash vibrant threatening colors to warn off predators. It's just so awesome. This has got to be, just like other cephalopods, this has got to be one of the most awesome species on the entire planet. But this one's a little extra cool because he walks on the bottom, he is a little poisonous, and, well, just look at him, he's awesome. So I could talk all day about how cool these guys are and give you a lot of science and facts and all that. But I think I'm just going to let the music play and let you guys watch. Of course, I got 15 minutes of footage of this guy and I can't play it all. But I'll give you a little bit right here. But of course, here in this last clip, I'm going to show you... I had to get that iconic shot of him catching some food with that long, weird tongue of his. Just look how proud he is. Well, I saw a lot more on this dive, but I'm going to save that for another video. Because if I showed you everything just from today, it would be a one hour video. But on my safety stop, I got a little bit of entertainment from these razor fish in the grass. I think they were inviting me to come back to this dive site, which is probably my new favorite. That was the best dive I've had since... April for sure <laughs> maybe the whole year I can't remember but just I think you divers know the feeling it's just euphoria after a dive it's just so nice relaxing and I think underwater photographers and videographers probably get a little extra adrenaline rush when they have that diver euphoria with being able to film some awesome species and knowing that you got awesome footage it's just an extra level of Euphoria, I guess. <laughs> it's awesome. So, even if I don't find anything on the next dive, it's definitely not a di uh, wasted day like a couple days ago when I got sick. So, now we're in between dives. We're at the restaurant of Dumaguete Divers. Gonna have some lunch and then we're gonna go search for octopus. It's not even octopus season, so I shouldn't even say that. We're gonna film whatever we find. It's going to be a whole different dive site. That dive site was, uh, uh, it, I think it's called Talisai near El Dorado, down the beach from Atlantis. I don't know the exact site, but it's, it's one of my favorites. I saw so much, as you guys just saw. And when I got out of the beach, somebody actually recognized me for my videos. So <laughs> shout out to Eddie. <laughs> So uh, you got an awesome place. If I lived where you live, I would never get out of the water. <laughs> he was literally standing there when I got out of the water. It's a crazy house. So yeah, let's eat and then let's see what I get on the next dive.
place again. I bumped this I came, I came here father and daughter. <laughs> Dive monster! <laughs> Well, the dive monsters who I'd never met before and who I just ran into right before getting in told me where I could find a porcelain crab. So I'm going straight to where they said and see if I can find it. But first I gotta check out this squat lobster. Then of course I ran into this and for the life of me I can't remember the name of it. So I'm just calling him Mohawk Man. And on the way there, maybe 15 meters deep, I found another giant frogfish. Black one this time. Black ones are always hard to film because I can't really see any detail. But they're still cute. Then I got to the spot and he was right where they said. The porcelain crab. So this guy is colorful and interesting and even the green anemone he's on is colorful. But he sure doesn't make it easy to film. Today he's sitting on the very edge of the anemone and it's just flapping in the breeze. Well, current, you know what I mean. So just imagine trying to set up the tripod in a way that doesn't touch the anemone or anything else and then getting a good shot of this guy as he flaps back and forth. I could have had about 20 minutes of footage of this guy but I only came back with a couple just because it was usually focused and then he would move away and it would get out of focus again. But the shots I did get were pretty awesome. You can see him grabbing morsels out of the air or off the anemone and eating them. I just love these little guys. And the great thing is, it's another critter challenge accomplished. Brian Davies challenged me to find a colorful crab and I've been searching and I haven't found any until today. So I can't believe today I actually crossed off two critters from the challenge. I haven't crossed off one in the last 10 dives. And it's a good one too because this crab is one of my favorite species. And just like the first dive, I'm going to skip a lot of the footage that I got and put it in a video of its own because this video would just be hours long if I showed you everything I found today. But just like the last dive, I got entertained at my safety stop, and this time by eel catfish which a lot of people don't know are actually poisonous as well, so don't get stabbed by one. Alright, I'm back home now, and I don't know how to explain today's diving, except for maybe euphoria <laughs> the first dive we we just went had no expectations and I found a flamboyant cuttlefish right away and I just followed that thing around for like 12 minutes got so much footage too much for one video but it was awesome uh, it's double cool because one of the critter challenges uh, Jerome and Bali uh, challenged me to find a cuttlefish or a flamboyant cuttlefish and ever since then I haven't been able to find one so I finally got to check it off today 
Uh, after that, we dove around, found all kinds of stuff, shrimp, crabs, uh, and then I found that uh, sea moth, and that was really cool. So, and then <laughs> there's a little skeleton shrimp on its back, so that was double cool. Uh, the second dive, I was a little bit worried because we are going to a site that I th usually think is pretty boring. It's at the sanctuary, the cars, and it's the one I just did in the last episode where I got sick. And it was pretty boring even before I got sick. I didn't really film anything. Uh, but lo and behold, this dive was the exact opposite. As soon as I get to the cars, there's a porcelain shrimp. And again, Brian Davies, he challenged me to find and film a colorful crab. And there he was, just sitting there, a little porcelain crab. So, I got to film that guy. Uh, what Something I didn't film, while I was filming the crab, I was going like this because there was a Mori eel like sniffing my elbow. And I was like, get out of here. <laughs> Uh, but it was a great dive. Saw tons of other shrimp, crab, I don't know, oh, frogfish. I think we saw a frogfish on both dives. It was just amazing. So, I don't know. I don't think it could have gotten any better. <laughs> just the exact opposite of la last episode, and I needed it. Uh, the only thing I didn't really, it wasn't awesome, was... I was planning on reviewing this D5, uh, but I'm still, I, I had a lot of problems with it on the last episode, last dives, just, there's a lot of flaws in this thing, and I keep thinking it's my, you know, I don't have the right settings or whatever, but for one, these buttons are way too big, and just wearing it around, you can't wear it every day like a watch, because you push the buttons, you push the buttons and it keeps changing the damn settings everything and the battery is low it doesn't even last one day so I switched arms and you still you still push the buttons even just a little bit moving your wrist and I think that's the problems I had when I was diving because I set the settings better on today than I did on the last episode and it worked better it at least matched my other computer uh, but then I must have hit the buttons again because all of a sudden it told me to do a 13 meter safety stop. And that's just stupid. <laughs> so I don't know what scenarios you're supposed to do a 13 minute or a 13 meter safety stop and a five meter safety stop. But uh, I have to figure it out. Because I think I had it on the right settings and then I just pushed the button on accident and switched it to Nitrox or something. Uh, I mean, not even Nitrox, just I don't know what, I don't know. So I got to figure that out. I'm not comfortable enough to do a full review yet until I really figure it out. I love the big display. I love that I could recharge it even though I have to recharge it every day. Um... I love how it looks, I love a lot about it, but it still keeps messing up. You know, half the time I look at it, there's no de no deco time. And I'm like, I have to push a buttons, bunch of buttons to find that display. Because there's a bunch of different displays. So all I want to see is my dive time, my depth, and my no deco time. I don't give a shit about 50 other things. So. I'm going to play around with it and give a full review when I figure it out better. But if you guys have a Sulto D5, let me know uh, what you think, what you did to get around this stuff. It looks awesome, but I mean, the display is so big and awesome that I'm scared to, I'm scared to wear it every day because I'm going to scratch it. But whatever. Besides that, awesome day. Gonna go do it again <laughs> as soon as I can, maybe tomorrow. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.